H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Hey guys, myself Sirish and welcome to this course Python 3. So since this is our first session, I would like to start with an introduction. Introduction to Python. All right, what is Python? Python is a general and multi-purpose and object-oriented and interpreted programming language. All right, so if you look at this definition, so Python is a general and multi-purpose object oriented and interpreted programming language so this is how i will define the python programming language and if someone asks you like what is python so this is what i would recommend like python is a general and multi-purpose object oriented and interpreted programming language all right so let's talk about these keywords so there are three different keywords in this definition right so let's try to understand for each keyword, what exactly this means is. Let's start with a general and multi-purpose means what? So basically, when it comes to the programming languages, not every language can be used for all the purposes. There are few languages which are very specific to a particular domain. So there are few languages which are very specific to the domain. So such kind of programming languages or such kind of languages, we call them as domain specific language. Example, SQL and HTML, some markup language. So if you look at the SQL and HTML, like the SQL, SQL is a language which helps us to query the databases. So that means this is very specific to the domain called database. And I cannot use the SQL for building the front-end applications. I cannot use the SQL for building some mobile applications. Likewise, we have HTML. So HTML is a markup language, which is again a domain-specific language, which is only used to construct an HTML pages. So besides that, I cannot really use that HTML in the other domains or in the other areas. So Python is not a domain-specific language or a programming language. Python is a general and multi-purpose programming language. That means Python is not specific to a single technology or it, it is not specific to a single application domain. It can be used across the multiple domains, across the multiple applications into multiple technologies. That means I can use Python to build some web applications using the Python based web frameworks. I can use Python to build some backend applications. I can use Python to do some scientific or mathematical calculations. So there are different ways we can use Python programming language. So that is the reason we are mentioning it as a general and a multi-purpose programming language. All right, so let's talk about the next one, object-oriented programming language. So basically to understand this, first let's understand the programming patterns so there are three different types of programming patterns in the programming world so one is procedural and the other is object oriented and the third is functional so in the programming world if you pick any programming language so most of these languages will support any of these kind of programming patterns. So we call them as programming patterns or paradigms. 
So basically, Python is the one which actually supports almost all these types of patterns and majorly it supports majorly it is based on the object oriented and that is the reason we are mentioning an object oriented in our definition but basically python also supports the procedural and functional programming patterns so what exactly this means is like what exactly an object oriented means so here in this type of the pattern basically everything will be deal in terms of the objects so let's assume that an object is looks like a container something like this Inside this, we will store the data. Often we refer them as attributes. Or properties. And also we will store some code. Often we refer them as some functions or methods. So combination of these two is called a container, which we are referring them as an object. So everything under the object oriented, we will treat everything as an object. And the way how our logic drives is communication between these objects and the way how uh, one object is going to change the other object properties or the functions. So all these, all this kind of stuff will actually comes under the object oriented programming pattern and python supports this kind of pattern and that is the reason we are calling the python as an object oriented programming language now let's talk about the third one interpreter so to understand this interpreter first let's understand the compiler concept for example if you take the java as a programming language in the java let's say we have a source code and there are some set of instructions and we are saving this source code in a file with an extension called Java. So in order to execute this source code, we need to have a compiler, right? So let's assume there is a compiler. Now what this compiler will do is, it actually converts the source code into the byte code. So which is like in the format of one zeros and zero ones. So this is the byte code or the machine code where the machine can understand and this is your source code right and now this file is called a class dot class and this is the compiled version of the source code now basically what this compiler will do is it will first convert the source code to the byte code and then it will execute the byte code and performs the actions whatever you mention in your source code so this is how a traditional compiler will actually work like the compiler is expecting a byte code version, a compiled, a compiled version of the source code in order to execute and perform the actions. But whereas when it comes to the interpreter, when it comes to the interpreter, here the things will work a bit differently. So let's say you have your Python code and the file extension is .py and you have some series of lines of code here and there is an interpreter. So by default, Python will ship with an interpreter. And once, whenever you install the Python on your system, the interpreter is available for you to execute your Python code. So basically, Python code will directly read the source code and will directly execute the instructions you provided on the source code. So the interpreter is not expecting a compiled version of the Python source code. It is not expecting a compiled version it will directly read your source code and will directly execute the instructions on the fly and that is why we are calling the python as an interpreted programming language all right so now let's talk about one last point about python python syntax is mm. simple and of course it is really powerful so this is one of the very interesting feature about the Python programming language. The reason why Python is becoming more popular day after the day, and it is one of the fastest growing programming language on the planet is because of, one of the reason is it's a syntax. It's a syntax is very, very simple, and it's easy to read and easy to understand. So I will give you one small example about it's a syntax. So let's take a string variable, str is equal to 
hello world right now i would like to i would like to pick only the first four characters the first four characters from this string the string is hello world and i would like to uh, get only the first four characters let's start with the java programming str dot substring substring of 0 comma 4 so this is how i can achieve this in the java now let's look into the like the c++ in c++ the same thing can be achieved using str dot sub str which is like the substring it is 0 comma 4 so in the python the syntax is very simple just str of 4 that's it and there is one more reason why python is really super powerful or super popular is because of its standard library like for example if you want to do some mathematical calculation some some sort of equation if you want to calculate you don't need to actually start from the ground there will be already a library available for doing such kind of calculations and your job is to import that or to integrate that library in your project and start using this on the fly and there is a reason uh, you most of the times you will hear that python is a programming language which is like batteries included like batteries included so what does that mean is let's say for example you you purchase a remote car but the store didn't provide you the batteries with the car so that means the car is not really functional so you need to again look for other store where you can purchase the batteries and then you need to insert those things in your car and then start using it but whereas if you look in some other store so those, that store is actually offering the same remote car with the batteries included that means same movement you can start using your car because it's functional because it has the batteries shipped along with it so here the batteries are like the libraries and and car is something like the python programming language so python is is default shipped with the standard libraries which is really vast and there are tons of libraries available for python that actually makes this programming language more powerful and it can extend its functionality to the other boundaries all right so there is one more thing uh, which you need to understand so this course is all about python 3.x version why i'm stressing on this because if you look at the internet you might find another version of python that is python 2.x all right so the last release under this 2.x series is python 2.7 and 2.7 is the one which uh, which is the last release from the 2.x series and this release is going to be supported until end of 2020 so until this year that version is going to get supported and after that the 2.x series is going to be stopped and there will be no support and that is the reason it doesn't make any sense for us to really look into python 2.x so we are going to learn only python 3.x series python 2.0 is actually released in the year 2000 and the support is extended to 2020 and python 3.0 x series is actually started in the year 2008 so this is just for your information uh, because this course is is mainly designed for python 3.x not for python 2.x series all right so one last thing uh, which i would like to share with you is about an organization which is a non-profit organization called python software foundation so the python software foundation is a non-profit organization which is actually manages and directs the resources for the python programming language python is a free language you don't need to pay any single dollar to use this to install this programming or to build something based on this programming language it's it's, it's totally free so now there should be a question like who is actually maintaining this programming language who is actually uh, you know publishing the updates or maintaining the releases or maintaining the standards right now this is the organization which you need to remember psf python software foundation so you will learn more about this organization if you look at python.org 
python.org is an official website for the python programming language python.org so once you open this website you will find more about the psf and python and the documentations and it's a standard library so whatever we discuss so far in this session so everything you can find out from this uh, website python.org and that's all for now and this is all about introduction to python i will see you in the next video thank you